Happy birthday, Micah, and happy birthday to Ashley and Stephen and some others that are here this morning. Uh, we're very, very happy for each of you, certainly, and uh, we do love you very, very much. Those that are watching this online, I encourage you to share the live stream. Some of you, maybe even in your car, could share the, the message that's taking place online this morning. You could, uh, you could maybe go on your dad or whatever and share that. That would be tremendous. I'm going to try to sing a song for you here this morning called He's Living Again. Three days in misery and dread, knowing that Christ our Lord was dead. Mary arose that first Easter morn and went to the tomb. Peter and John came following on. Can you honk a horn? Honk a horn there. Very good. Praise the Lord. Very good. Flash those lights. That's good. And make those windshield wipers go. Awesome. Fantastic. Very good. We are sure glad that you're here for church this morning. Amen. Let's look at John chapter 20. John chapter 20. And uh, we'll read here verses 11 through 21. John chapter 11, verses 20. Uh, sorry, rather, John chapter 20, verses 11 through 21. The Bible says, says this in verse number 11, But Mary stood without at the sepulcher, weeping. And as she went, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. And see a two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. And Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast uh, laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni which is to say, Master. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord, and that he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst, and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed, them his, showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. 
Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. I want to talk to you this morning about the basis of our faith. The basis of our faith. Let's have a word of prayer and ask God to speak to our hearts this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this Lord's Day. Uh, thank you for the sunshine coming out this morning. Thank you that it's not raining. Thank you that we can assemble for church. I pray, Lord, you'd use your word to, again, strengthen our faith. Strengthen our faith because of the crucified and risen Savior. We know he's living again. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that we serve a Savior who's not, who's not dead. The founder of our religion is not dead, but it's someone who is living and interceding for us and seated at the right hand of the Heavenly Father. We thank you so much, Lord, for that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Again, I encourage those who watch us online to share this with others, that others can watch. I encourage you to invite somebody else to come and join us uh, next Sunday. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Of course, we need to have faith in God. We need to have faith in God's creation and God as being the creator. And we must have our faith in God's Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Our relationship with God the Father begins through faith in God's Son, Jesus Christ. You know, sometimes when trials come in life or sometimes when relationships fail for people, there are some who tend to feel as though maybe God has left them stranded like a broken down car somewhere on the, on the side of the road. I remember a night many years ago, this wasn't long after my wife and I were married and we were living in London, Ontario, and I was working a sales job trying to sell this tax service to truck drivers. And so I would go out to different service centers and truck stops trying to meet uh, truck drivers and talk to them. And one night I was out on Highway 402 in between London and Sarnia. And if you know anything about that highway, in between London and Sarnia, there's nothing. <laughs> there's nothing on that highway. Uh, any little towns that they are, they're kind of usually well off the highway a bit. And it's just a dark, lonely highway where people are generally going from one destination to another spot. And I broke, I, uh, what happened? I think I got a flat tire or something there at, out at the side of Highway 402 one night. And I was alone there, stranded in the dark. I did all that I could to try to, for the rare car that came along, try to get them to stop and nobody wanted to stop. I don't know if they just thought there was a broken down car. It was so dark they, they weren't seeing me before they were already by me. It was a rainy night too. Rainy and windy, cold night, freezing in the middle of winter time. And I was freezing to death and trying to get somebody to stop me. I felt pretty alone that night. You know, sometimes people wrongly and sadly, when they go through some trial, they maybe get to thinking, am I all alone? Has God left me stranded, stranded here on the side of the road and everything's broken down and, and he doesn't care? No, God cares about you. I can assure you that. I promise you that the Lord sees, the Lord knows, the Lord cares, the Lord's interested. The Lord will send somebody to help you. He'll be there to help you. Sometimes in trials, people start to doubt their faith. And that, that's a sad thing. If Jesus is truly the basis of our faith, we do not have to doubt God's desire to help us and to work through us through the challenges and trials that we face in life. You know, one of the reasons that people turn from faith is because they've never been properly rooted and grounded in the faith. Now, what is the basis for our faith? What is the basis for our Christian faith? Well, the basis for our faith is the empty tomb. It's the empty tomb. We have a friend that works at the Garden Tomb uh, Ministry there in, in Jerusalem. And thank God there's, there's no proof or evidence there of the Savior because he's gone. He's gone. We don't know for sure if that garden tomb is necessarily the place where Jesus was, body, was laid, although there are a lot of things that they can point to scripturally that indicate it very much could be the place. 
that maybe after having dug, dug down in the excavation and opened up this incredible garden there that would have been outside uh, Jerusalem there and, and uh, the place of the skull, Golgotha, you can see on a hillside and, and so on and, and a garden tomb and a burial place uh, uh, near, nearby. It very much uh, indicates what, what the scriptures tell us. And that may or may not be the place where Jesus' body was, uh, was laid. But thank God it's not there anymore. He's living again. He rose again from the grave. And, and Christ is, is not there in the tomb to prove whether that was the right one or not. He's living again. Listen, the basis for our faith as Bible believers and as Christians is that Jesus Christ rose again from the grave. He rose again from the dead. And, and the Christian faith is based really entirely upon the validity of the resurrection. The resurrection. It's what sets, sets our faith apart from any other religion. Jesus kept his promise to rise again from the dead. Even though Jesus would be killed, he would rise again. The Bible tells us in Matthew 26, 31 and 32, Then saith Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is right, and I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Christ told his disciples that he was going to rise again from the grave. If Jesus Christ can keep that promise, then you and I can have faith in the hundreds of other promises in the word of God. Right? If Jesus can keep his promise to rise from the dead, then there's no promise that he cannot keep. He has all power. On one occasion, Jesus said that as Jonah was three days in the belly of the whale, so he would also be three days in, in the tomb before he, before he arose. There's a story that's told about a Christian lady who, she did a lot of, she did a lot of traveling. She did a lot of traveling. And because flying made her nervous, she always uh, took her Bible on the airplane with her. On one particular trip, there was a man that saw the lady and she had her Bible open on her lap and she was reading the Bible. And, and this man said to her, oh, you don't really believe all that stuff, do you? And the lady, the lady said, well, of course I do. He said, well, what about that guy who was, who was swallowed by a whale? Oh, yes, I believe in the, the account of Jonah and the whale. Jonah and the great big fish. He said, well, how do you suppose he was all that time in, inside the whale and, and still lived? She said, I don't know. I'll have to ask him when I get to heaven. And he said very sarcastically, well, what if Jonah isn't in heaven? And she said, well, you can ask him then. You can ask him then. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> hey, we have a wonderful faith. You can believe that the word of God is true. I believe Jonah and the whale. I believe that God parted the Red Sea for Moses. I believe that God can do miracles. Why? If Jesus can rise from the dead, there is nothing that God's power cannot do. The resurrection is the basis for our faith today as Christians. Look with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and I'll read there verses 1 to 4. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 to 4. The Bible says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according According to the scriptures. I believe what the Bible says. I believe that Jesus died and was buried and rose again. And that's the basis for our faith. We have Christ's promise that we as well are going to be resurrected uh, one day. 1 Corinthians uh, 15 verses uh, 12 down through verse number 23. The Bible says in verse 12, Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there's no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he, he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. You're yet in your sins. 
then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, and afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Listen, just as Jesus Christ was raised up from the dead, our bodies will also one day be resurrected at the rapture. We have God's promise of that. Look as well with me at 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter uh, number 4 there in verse 13 to 17. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 to 17. God's word says this. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise, whoops, shall rise rise first. My page blew away. And so, uh, sorry, verse number 17, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Death and the grave is not the end for the believer. Those that sleep in the New Testament Scriptures, they were talking about those that had already died, those that had passed away. They slept with their fathers. They had passed away. They had died. Listen, those that had already died, he was, he was, he was trying to assure the believers that there, if there was some who had died with having their faith in Christ, and Christ hadn't returned yet. His coming back had not taken place yet. But, but the writer is assuring them, and God is assuring them, that if they were asleep in Christ, they were dead in Christ, their body would would be resurrected one day at the rapture. Death and grave is, is not the end for you and I as born again believers. The Bible tells us this over in 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15 and verse 55 and 57. It says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. The promise, don't worry about that paper if it blows away. I didn't need it anyways. The promise of our faith is that we will be resurrected unto eternal life. Death in the grave, it cannot contain us. It cannot hold us. We have life and eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. Consider this morning the proof of our faith. The proof of our faith. Acts chapter 1 and verse 3. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. We see the proof of the empty tomb. We read about it this morning when we started in the Gospel of John and, and chapter 20. Back there in verses 6 and 7, Then cometh Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulcher and seeth the linen clothes lie and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but wrapped together in a place by itself. You know, if Jesus' body had been stolen, the linen clothes would not have been all neatly arranged in the tomb. But listen, Jesus Jesus no longer had any need, need for those, for those uh, clothes that he was wrapped in because he was alive. He was resurrected. Uh, he rose up from the grave. And so those clothes were lying there and the napkin was neatly folded and lying there because Jesus had no longer a need for that. Why do Christians insist that Jesus Christ is the way? It's because of the empty tomb. Because of the empty tomb. We have the proof of the empty tomb. We also have the proof of the, the many appearances of Jesus Christ. Again, we see it through the book of Acts, chapter 1, and so on, and how he was seen by many, many witnesses. Hundreds and hundreds of eyewitnesses uh, saw Jesus Christ after the crucifixion. 
We insist that Jesus Christ is the way because of the empty tomb. We have the proof of the empty tomb. We have the proof of the appearances of Christ. In John chapter 20, down in verse 19 and 20, he ended up appearing to the disciples. It says there, then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. He showed them his hands where the nails had been driven through his hands as he was nailed to the cross. He showed them his side where a spear had been driven into him. And oh, how the disciples rejoiced that their Savior, he was risen again. He was risen again. He was seen by the disciples there in that room. He was seen by Mary Magdalene. He was seen by 11 of his disciples. What proof do we have of the resurrection of Christ? We have the proof of the empty tomb. We have the proof of the appearances of Christ to many eyewitnesses. We also can have, have the proof because of, of the great power that was seen in the, in the early church, the New Testament church, first century church. Within weeks of the crucifixion, thousands of Jews became convinced and followed Christ. That, that didn't happen because somebody was spreading a lie. It happened because Jesus rose again. Jesus was truly risen from the dead. I'm sure that there was many Jews that before had denied him and rejected him and so on. But when they heard about the risen Savior, maybe they heard from some others that had seen Jesus and, but they, and people who were turning to Jesus, and they as well turned and believed and followed Jesus Christ. Even great persecutors of the church like Saul of Tarsus, he turned to Jesus Christ for his salvation. And there were many conversions like that. I'm sure there was many conversions. Of course, uh, Saul's experience was, it was incredible. And, and uh, though he, he, he um, had the amazing appearance of Christ on the road, uh, Damascus Road, he actually got to be one as well that, that saw Christ. There was many other Jews like him, I'm sure, that you know, hated these people the way and hated these, th those that believed in Jesus and were trying to call him the, the Son of God and so on. But you know what? Many of them turned to Christ in those days. Many of them turned to Christ in that first century and the first century church. Many conversions, even by those who at first opposed Christ, all of this is really proof to the fact that there is a risen Savior. Jesus rose from the grave. And our faith is not in vain. Our faith is legitimate. Our faith is real. Our faith is something substantial and something that we can hold on to and cling to. It's the basis for our faith. This fact that Jesus Christ rose from the grave. He rose again. The Bible says in Acts 2, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Changed lives were proof of the power of the gospel. The Bible says in Acts 2, 32 and 33, This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received the Father of the Father, the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. So many witnesses, so many changed lives, so many people whose hearts were turned towards the Lord Jesus Christ. Jews and Gentiles alike became witnesses of the fact that Christ was risen from the dead. And they were converted. The power and the proof of the Christian faith is that we have a Savior who died and who rose again. And it sets us apart from all other religions. We've seen uh, the promise of our faith. Death in the grave is not the end for the Christian. We have eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have the promise of the resurrection. The promise of the resurrection. The proof of our faith is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He has power over death. We see the empty tomb. We see the appearances of Christ. We see the lives that were changed and people who were converted. Uh, all of this because of Christ, because he rose from the grave. Listen, if he was not risen, the Bible says, then our faith would be vain. We would have no basis for our faith. We would have nothing to, to cling to and hold on to. But we've got Christ. And I'm glad in reality it's not just me clinging and holding on to him. It's him clinging and holding on to me. Amen. The Bible would tell us in John chapter 10 that if we believe, you know, we're, we're, in, we're safe in the hands of Christ. And then the Father's hands are, are over, the, over Christ's hands. And nobody can pluck us out of the Father's hands. What a blessing it is to be in Christ Jesus today. To have my faith in the risen Savior. The proof of our faith is... 
is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Christ. He has power over death. We see the empty tomb and so on. We can also see today that the, 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 the peace that our faith brings. The peace that our faith brings. Back in John chapter 20, where we started this morning. John chapter 20, if we look down at verse 19 to 21, it says, Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the disciples were shut, the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. And it's logical, right? These, the Jews hated Christ, and they just wrongly had him tried and crucified and, and so on. He hadn't done anything wrong, but their hatred for Christ was so strong that they'd rather have a, a prisoner like Barabbas released and have Christ put to death. And so any of the disciples, the apostles that identified with Christ, they, they could have easily thought, man, our life's in jeopardy too. They're going to be coming after us next. And so they're kind of assembled in, in secret, in hiding, if you will, with the door shut because of fear of the Jews. But the Bible says, then came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples clad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. You know what? There is great peace in the presence of Christ. The disciples experienced great peace in the presence of Christ when he came and he stood there in the midst that day. In John chapter 16, verse 33, Jesus, it also says this, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. Jesus said to his disciples earlier in John chapter 16, before the crucifixion, he said, In me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. There's great peace in the life of a Christian because we know the Lord Jesus. And we can experience the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit of God in our life. We can experience Christ dwelling in our heart. We can have great peace today as believers because we know Jesus Christ. Because the risen Savior, not only is He sitting at the right hand of the Father interceding for us, but in the person of the Holy Spirit of God, He also dwells within us. And we can have peace today as believers, no matter what trials we go through, no matter what tribulations we face, no matter what troubles we have. Thank God for that. My mom has a peace that the Lord gives. My mom is, is, is inside the building today all, all alone there. It was just, she was too cold for her as an 80, 80 uh, how old is she? An 81-year-old woman now, 82-year-old woman? 81, 81, I think. <laughs> and so she's sitting in there alone. Boy, my mom has great peace. She has great peace through, through the trials of life and the difficulties of life. She's experienced the presence of God as being real in her life. When my, when, my, when my mom's father passed away, she lost her dad and she lost her husband and she lost her son all in a short span of a few years. My dad being killed in a farm accident, my brother being killed in a car accident when someone ran a red light and struck his vehicle and, and he was killed. My mom went through some trials at that point in her life, some difficult things, and, and then was left with all kinds of big decisions to make, certainly, uh, after my father passed away, and being alone to still, still try to rear the children that were at home, and, and so on, and try to take care of the family. She went through a lot of things in her life, but she experienced the presence of God in her life that brought great peace through it all, through the trials of life. And the Lord does that for us. The Lord gives us peace in the midst of our troubles and trials and tribulations. I know He does. I've experienced that. Thank God for the peace that He brings to Christians. We can have peace with God. We can have salvation. We can have the, uh, the forgiveness of sins. We can be justified. That's, that's the peace. That's having peace with God that the Bible talks about in the book of Romans. We can have the peace of God as well. A peace of heart that only the Lord can give us. We can have the peace of God in us that as we go through trials and as we go through difficulties and as we go through uh, 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 temptations and testings in our lives and so on, the Lord gives us peace of heart. He as our good shepherd, as our great shepherd, walks through the valley with us as Psalm chapter 23 would talk about. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. 
Jesus Christ is our great shepherd who does go through things with us and gives us peace in our hearts. We can have the peace of God in us when we go through trials and difficulties. You know, the world experiences sorrow like we do not. The Bible says the world sorrows as those who have no hope. When the world loses a loved one and a lost person loses a loved one and, and they don't know the Lord and they don't know that they're going to see their loved one again in, in eternity or see them in heaven, boy, they sorrow as those that have no hope. But for us who are born again believers, we know that we have eternal life. We believe in the resurrection. We know we're going to see our loved ones again in heaven. And we have peace in our heart because of that those that are saved. There is a peace that only the Lord can give. There's great peace that comes through the promises of Christ. Now, Jesus offers to us salvation. Over in the book of Romans chapter 4, if you want to look at that with me, Romans chapter 4 and verse 24. Romans 4, 24, it says, But for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Christ was crucified. He was delivered up to be crucified. He died on the cross for our transgressions, for our sins, for your sins, for my sins. He died for the sins of the world. That those that would believe on him could be saved, could have eternal life. And not only that, he not only died for us, but he was raised again for our justification, the Bible says. What is justification? It is what God does with our sins all our sins are washed away if there was a record with the name Brian Johnston and, and before I got saved all my sins were recorded there on that record all my sins were recorded in the book of life with the name Brian Johnston at the top of it all the sins I'd ever done but on the day when I believed in Jesus Christ 1981 when I bowed my knee when I put my faith in Jesus Christ when I trusted him as my personal savior all my sins were washed away I was justified just as if I'd never sinned my record was made clean in the eyes of God and his righteousness Christ's righteousness was placed on my record instead amen Justification and imputation are big words, but they're some of the most blessed doctrines in the Scriptures. Listen, the Bible teaches that Jesus Christ, He was delivered up for our offenses, for our sins, for our transgressions, how we've broken God's laws. But He was also raised again for our justification. And it's because of His death and because of His resurrection that we can have this promise of eternal life, the promise of salvation, the promise of having peace with God. It continues on in chapter 5 and says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace with God. There's peace between me and my Creator. Peace between me and my Maker. Because I've been justified. I've been forgiven. I've been cleansed. My sins have been washed away. Because I believe, because I put my faith in the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who died and rose again to pay for my sins. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 and verse number 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You've got to believe in a Savior, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for your sins, who was buried and rose again. Corinthians says it's the gospel. It's where we, what we stand upon. It's, 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 it's how we're saved. Faith in the gospel that Jesus died and was buried and rose again for our sins. And if you'll believe in your heart that Jesus is the Son of God and believe He died for your sins, admit and acknowledge your sinfulness before God, understanding that a holy God, He, he hates our sin, but yet He loves you and I as sinners. And Jesus died for you and me. He took our place. If you'll believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose again and he died for your sins, you can be saved today. You know, you must have a relationship with Jesus Christ in order to get to heaven. That relationship only comes through faith in the gospel, faith in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. If it seems like your faith is not working, then likely you don't have a relationship with God the Father and God's Son, Jesus Christ. If there's something that's just, just your, your faith isn't working, maybe your faith is not in Jesus Christ. Maybe you need to be saved. 
Perhaps you need to turn to Christ and trust Him as your personal Savior today. You and I as Christians, as born-again believers, we can have peace of heart today because we've got the promise of salvation. And it gives us peace with God. We've got the promise of His resurrection. We've got the promise of His second coming. Listen, there may be a lot of crazy things going on in our world today. But if you know that you're saved, you know that you're going to be resurrected one day, you know that you're going to be taken up at the rapture or be resurrected. Hey, I'd like to be taken up at the rapture. Wouldn't that be exciting? But listen, if you know these things and you have your, your hope in these things and your faith in these things because of the Lord Jesus Christ, then you ought to be able to live with peace in your heart today. You don't have to live fearful and, and despairing and anxious and worried about what tomorrow holds or what the future holds. I know my future is settled. The Bible says in Acts chapter 1 and verse 10 and 11, and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, this is when Jesus was taken up in the clouds and when he ascended to heaven after giving some final words to, the, to his disciples. It says, they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up. And behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, two, two angels, I believe, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. I don't know when he's going to come. It may be today. It may be in the clouds. Wouldn't it be wonderful to be out here some Sunday having church and all of a sudden Jesus comes in the clouds? Wow. What a day that'd be. See, I see somebody looking for him right now. Hey, he's coming. <laughs> in like manner, he is coming again. The Bible says in John chapter 14, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Listen, is your faith truly resting in Jesus Christ? Do you have peace that your sins have personally been covered or forgiven by the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you, are you at peace with God? Do you know for sure beyond any doubt that you are saved, that you're God's child? You, the only way to have peace with God is for you to put your faith in Jesus Christ. Peace with God doesn't come by you going to church or being religious or doing a bunch of good works and trying to, to well, maybe if I do more good than bad, then, then God will be pleased with me and I'll become his child. No, that's not how it works. God's not pleased by our righteousness, by our attempts at going about to establish our own righteousness or do good works or do things to please God. No, we can only be saved by faith in Jesus Christ. God is pleased when you put your faith in Jesus Christ. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is. Do you believe that God exists? Do you believe that God created you? Will you admit that you're a sinner? Just like Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, we've all sinned willfully. We've all chosen to sin. Yes, we have a sin nature because of Adam, but we all, we've all chosen to sin. We've all broken God's laws. We've all sinned against God. And because of our sin, we need the Savior. We need Jesus Christ. And if you've never done so, if you'll put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and trust Him and Him alone as your personal Savior, you can be born again. You can become a child of God. You can have a home in heaven. It comes through faith in Christ, faith in the gospel. Believing that Jesus died and was buried and rose again to pay for your sins. And because he rose again, listen, our faith is not vain this morning. It's not vain. If Jesus was just some good man who taught a bunch of good stories and, you know, made some claims of being God and so on, and then he died and that was the end of it, we'd have nothing to put our faith in. We really wouldn't. We'd be like any other people from, from religions that are trusting in this or trusting that. But we have something different. The founder of our faith is someone who rose again from the grave. He rose from the dead. And because of him, we also have the hope of the resurrection. Amen. I like those, those things waving there. Wouldn't you wipe us? We can have uh, the hope of eternal life. Because it's real, it's true. Jesus died and was buried and rose again. He rose again. Is your faith this morning truly resting in Jesus Christ? Do you have peace that your sins have been covered or forgiven by the Lord Jesus? It's one thing to know about the promises of faith. It's another thing to prove the, prove the faith. 
It's a personal joy and miracle to know the peace that comes through the Lord Jesus Christ. To have peace with God, but also to experience the peace of God in our heart. Bible said in, in Romans 5, again, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know Him? Do you know Him? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Is there peace between you and God? There can be if you'll put your faith in Jesus Christ for salvation. God wants you to have a real faith that guarantees you eternal life up there in heaven. Someday. But He also wants you to experience an abundant life down here on earth now. And all of that is possible. Eternal life forever and abundant life now if your faith will be in God's Son, Jesus Christ, who died, was buried, and rose again to pay for our sins. I hope you're experiencing the, 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 the peace of God in your heart. I hope you've got peace with God, knowing that you're saved and you're forgiven and that God has, has accepted you in the Beloved because of Christ, because how He died for our sins and rose again. I hope your faith is in Him today. If it's not, you need to trust Him. You need to trust Him. You need to cry out from, in sincerity, cry out from your heart to God in prayer, putting your faith and trust in Him and Him alone, asking Jesus to be your personal Savior. Will you do that today if you've never done so? If you watch this online, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. You can call me. You can message me. My, my, my uh, cell phone number is 416-300-0735. 416-300-0735. My email address is pastorjohnston at rogers.com. Be glad to try to answer your questions or show you from the Bible how you can have this eternal life that God wants you to have. How your life can be changed. If you have any questions about our church, any questions about the Bible, we'd be glad to talk to you and try to be a help in your life. We'd love to send you a little gospel book called Done. It tells you what most religions don't tell you about the Bible. It tells you the difference between all the religions of the world and that true faith and that relationship with Jesus Christ that He wants you to have. We're not saved by our works. We're saved because of the finished work of Christ on the cross of Calvary who died for our sins. I'd love to send you the, a gospel book if you'd like to have it. And it can be a great help and blessing in your life to understand uh, the truth. Thanks for those that watch us online. Thanks for those that came here uh, to church this morning. I pray it's been a help to you. I hope you'll be strengthened in your faith. Let's have a word of prayer together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for allowing us to meet. Thank you for holding off rain and giving us sunshine today. We do pray, Lord, that you would strengthen us in our faith. We pray that you'd help the people of our church and people in our community uh, to come to the Lord, to experience having peace with God. God, knowing for sure that they're saved, knowing that they have eternal life and their sins forgiven. And, and then may they as believers experience the peace of God uh, in their hearts, even through trials, even through uh, uh, testings, even through troubles that come their way. Listen, every Christian, Lord, we know should be a rejoicing Christian, a joyful Christian. And we should have that and we can have that because Christ, where there's, there's peace available to us through Christ and joy available to us through Christ. Help us to know your presence in our life and your peace and your joy and just the fulfillment that you want us to have, the abundant life you want us to have. I thank you, Lord, that I have experienced it. I know it's real. Thank you, God, that my faith is real. Thank you, Jesus, that you rose again uh, from, from, the, from the grave. You rose again from the dead, proving your power, proving that you were the Son of God, just like you said you were. I love you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for making a difference in my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for being here today. Invite somebody to join you uh, next Sunday. And uh, we'll look forward to having a great day with Drive-In uh, Church for the next little while. Okay? God bless you.